met Reagan in 1980, and you know I'd known about him in politics, and he was on my you know top five list of you know uh, evil politicians. You know there was a bigger list. Uh, you know Nixon was like up near the top. Um, but, uh, you know, by 1980, it seemed like he'd run for president before and he was getting older and there were, and Jimmy Carter was president and we didn't really think that he was going to be turned out. And I saw him in New Hampshire and he seemed like a buffoon and, uh, kind of, but then there were eight years with that guy. Uh, buffoons are often elected president. True. You know, we've had a, quite a few of them, in fact, if you really look back. George W. Bush. Uh, For example, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, 19th century, you know. Uh, well, I, oh, okay, uh, I'll give you a Warren G. Harding, great buffoon. He even said before he died uh, that I never should have been elected. <laughs> <laughs> he actually acknowledged that he did not belong in office. He was the one who had a child out of wedlock with this. They just uh, confirmed uh, that recently. Huh? What? They just confirmed that recently that his is right. He had a, of course, you know that's like they just confirmed it about ten years ago that uh, Sally Hemings was sleeping with uh, Thomas Jefferson <laughs> and, and their family. Yeah. But you know the the other members of the family have known it a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah, so Trump, you know, could be the next, um, uh, it, it reads a lot like that book from 1936, the um, uh, It Can't Happen Here, which was a Sinclair Lewis book about how fascism could come to America. A very prescient book. Is you Trump know. really a fascist? I mean, I don't... See well, you know, in the sense one. that if you listen to what he says, what is strip away all the funny stuff, you know, and the cute you know, charisma, and what he says is he he thinks that the basically going out and personally like some sort of macho gl corporate gladiator striking deals and striking people down, and he, you know, brutally and viciously, this is an, a woman reading an ad that's just been released. He, he One of his pledges is to brutally and viciously behead ISIS. That's a you know that's a goal. That's a policy goal. Now, you know wow. his administration. You know also he thinks that you know basically what he says amounts to Congress is irrelevant. Politicians are all twerps and losers, and basically you need a strong man, a strong man leader like me. Why am I a strong man? Because I've made more money than almost everybody else. I proved that I can go in and you know and win in any situation. Doesn't matter what the tactics are. You can see from his campaign pain that he doesn't care about tactics. Anything is game. Any tactic is on the table. Um, and if he had an administration, the people he would invite in would be, in, literally in his words, and I quote him, killers. Now, he means corporate killers, but basically uh, he, his idea is in philosophy, you would call this a Hobbesian view of the world. He thinks we're all, you know, everyone is, everyone is out for their own vicious self-interest, and they're out there to get you and kill you. They're all, everyone is an enemy, and we're losing because the Chinese, and particularly, you know, notice the, the yellow. He's, he's, he's kind of hot on the yellow people. He's, he's deeply reactionary because he is reacting to the Pacific shift that's going on globally in culture, that is, from the Atlantic worldview of Europe and the old world to the Pacific West Coast and into Asia, where the power is shifting, and he's a reaction to that. He's part of a wave of ca cultural counter-revolution. Um, uh, he expresses it differently, but he expresses it with humor, with all of the guile of the media. He is a media messiah, almost, because he has mastered this, this technology and the manipulation of this technology to, to achieve power, power only for himself. And any promise he makes, he immediately withdrawn. Nothing he says really means anything in terms of what he would actually do. Hmm. And we all know this. We can see it. He's transparent about it. Well, yeah, that, that, I think that's, that's it's, 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 it's strongest thing is the transparency that he blurts out anything that he feels. At least, I mean, he rules you. I will rule you. I will rule you benevolently because, you know, I'm a nice guy. I'm a lot nicer guy than the people think I am. You know, I give to a lot of charities. <laughs> and I'm funny. And you, if you disagree with me, I will destroy you. Get in your place. That's fascism. That's brutality. 
That's no different than Silvio Berlusconi in Italy was a lot like that. He was a kind of a crypto fascist. That's what we have now. We don't have outright fascists. We have crypto fascists. Corporate, and now the corporate, we've challenged corporate power, and they're saying to us, you want us to come out of the closet? We will. We will show you who rules you. The Cokes are giving interviews now, trying to sell themselves as benign, benevolent philanthropists. <laughs> it's amazing. And we don't know what the outcome of this current chapter in the war will be. There's a countdown clock ticking to one year from now, and we'll find out. And in the balance, the Supreme Court, Congress, abortion rights, climate change, you name it. I can't imagine... Uh... That's the news of the week.